Hello everybody, Flick here and welcome to Let's Chat, my weekly vlog series posted every Monday at midday. In fact, this is being posted on midday on the 9th, so at the time you're hearing this I'll be going out with my family for a birthday lunch. It's actually a couple of days early, my birthday is not until the Wednesday, but it's the only day basically people have off work etc. So yeah, while you hear this I'll be out stuffing my face at a local restaurant that I really like. They do good kind of like burger meals, all locally grown Aberdeen Angus, that kind of stuff. Very, very nice. I also collect a little Scottish flag they put in a burger when you order it every time I'm, I'm there, so I've got like four of them here just next to me. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been there, so I'm looking forward to it anyway, and it's always nice to have a meal with the family. And thank you in advance for any birthday wishes that you express in the comments of this when you hear it. I do appreciate it. I'm not going to read them out the week after, because that would just confuse people, quite frankly. Anyway, what have we got on the cards today? Well, I'm going to do the question and answers from last week's Let's Chat and also on Twitter. I have had a few on Twitter because I gave plenty of warning this time. And then I've got a couple of things to go over. First things first, as per I was talking about last time, reaching the, the milestone on my Patreon campaign, we have now rented a server. It was an exceptionally close vote, in fact there was only one vote between it, annoyingly, between whether I would rent a TF2 server or a CSGO server. Well, the TF2 one won by a single vote. I am very sorry to the people who wanted CSGO, but you know, we might give that a go next month, assuming we stay at that level, and then I'll gauge, gauge, whatever, whichever one was more popular. So it is all now set up, I did it this morning, it's all up and running, I went on it just to make sure everything seemed to be working. So it's a TF2 server, so TF2 is entirely free to play, and even if you're not usually into first person shooters, keep in mind it's a very cartoony, violent, you know, it's just, it's just fun to play as long if you don't take it too seriously you're going to enjoy it a lot more than somebody who does, put it that way. And it's uh, control point maps, so you don't need to be the best shooter in the world to win. You just need to push a little cart from point A to point B, or defend and stop the cart doing that. Or you can play as a support class like the Medic, in which case you just support the people who are good at shooting. So I think maybe, like when I describe it like that, it feels to me like it's, it's more accessible in more than one way. It's not just the fact that CSGO costs, what is it, £11.99, which is quite expensive. Another good thing about having to wait until next month potentially to rent a CSGO server is by then the Steam Summer Sale will either be ongoing or just about to start or like maybe just literally just started and there's a very good chance that CSGO will be on offer more than once. So I think it's worked out the best. You might disagree if you really wanted a CSGO server. Sorry if you did, but I tried to do it in as fair a way as I could possibly think of. So yeah, if you want to get on, hang on, I have the IP. So in TF2 you would just go to server list and you would do like find by IP or whatever. Save it to your favourites so you don't need to do this every single time. But the IP address you want to put in is 109.169.60.3 colon 27515. And if you didn't write that down or don't want to have to keep on replaying me reading that out, I've written it on Twitter, I've written it on the Steam group. Basically you can find it if you go looking. So it is there. Outside of Steam Group Nights, outside of any other additional events I decide to run using this server, it's all freely open. Feel free to invite your friends even if they've never heard of me, they've never watched a video I've ever done. Totally fine with me, as long as they, you know, they play fair, etc. And I, I do obviously reserve the right to kick people who aren't familiar with me in order to let people who are on. But yeah, it's an open server. I, I, I believe if I've set it up correctly at the time of me recording this. It's an open server that runs a selection of CP maps, control points, there's a few more to pick if the map list gets stale, or I could throw in some other ones. There's all the I've got a huge list of potential maps, including custom ones as well. So yeah, that is that. And now, the other thing I need to get out of the way is the shout-outs to patrons who were willing to back me for last month. So without further ado, my heartfelt thanks goes out to the following people. Sash, Paul Olson, RP Gamer, that's like R underscore P underscore Gamer, Joe Cothard, Aaron Hawkins, Gary, otherwise known as CR, Silver, Good Rory, otherwise known as Bad Connection Rory, Matsumuni, Ipo, Usi Kaleo, Alex, Michael Millward, Travelling Panda, Arn, Arunas, sorry, Johan and James Kilgore. Thank you very much, there's some new faces in there and I'm always happy to see that because I don't quite like that the old guard are the only ones supporting me. It starts to make me feel a bit uncomfortable that it's just down to them, so I'm glad to see more people willing to help out as well, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the TF2 server. It's going to last until, well, I think it goes from the second it's activated, so we've got it until the 5th of July at this point, so it will run into July a little bit, even if the Patreon support amount goes down. So 
just know that it's there and you have the IP as well. And if you want to get a shout out for yourself, check out the, the campaign page. And for as little as one dollar you can support me as well as getting some perks. So that's that done. Now let's move on to the question and answers. And I think I started with YouTube last time, so this time I'm going to start with Twitter. So let me just open up TweetDeck here and scroll down a little bit. Right, here we go. So from David, otherwise known as Corsair55, have you ever heard of the animated series RWBY? R mm, the acronym is not ringing a bell, so I am actually going to Google it. So apologies if you hear me stretching away. RWBY, oh come on Google, load. I know I'm uploading, but that's ridiculous. RWBY. Hope this doesn't turn out to be porn. Oh, it's a, roos a rooster teeth thing. Rooster teeth's RW, red, white, something? I don't know. Oh, here we are. It's a... Uh, let me read this. RWBY is a anime styled American CG animated web series created by the Rooster Teeth Productions Animation Studio. The series is created and directed by animator Monty Um. Oh, I, I know him very well. I loved his Halo Uber Matrix esque fight movies he used to make and the Final Fantasy ones as well. That is interesting. No, I have not heard of it. So if Monty Um is doing the animation, they must be very epic. Although I don't like just looking at some of the pictures here. I was going to say, like, the reason I kind of went off Monty Um's videos of, like, epic fights and whatnot is because he started to get too centric on, oh, look, here's a bunch of big boob ladies punching each other. Didn't like that at all. And this seems to be an all-female cast, judging by the pictures I'm seeing on Google Images. So, no, it's too fan y to me, I'm afraid. Still, if it's got epic fighting in it, that might still be good. Oh, and someone uses a scythe as well. I like scythes. Someone called Ruby, apparently. I'm not entirely sure if that's a man or a woman. So I guess they've got the anime style correct. Anyway, no, I have not heard of it. Is any good? Let me know on Twitter. Moving on. Lachi Schofield. I don't know. I don't think I pronounced that correctly. Apologies. This is probably a little late, but could you talk about the Dark Souls 2 DLC trailer? Well, as I told you on Twitter, you were not late because I gave plenty of warning this time. And yeah, I can. I can talk about that there's a trailer released. It actually got released early, and I'm not entirely sure if it was on purpose or not because... The press, we heard about it via a mail shoot, and it said in it, this is confidential, don't tell anyone. And then I was like, okay, well, I better not do that then. And then I was checking my YouTube and the official Namco Bandai EU channel put out the trailer. So I was like, well, why did you tell us to keep it secret for all of an hour? <laughs> but either way, yeah, Dark Souls 2 is getting three sets of DLC. They're, they th fit the theme of your character wanting to follow in the footsteps of uh, Ken Vendrick by going to go reclaim crowns that he once held. So each DLC pack is like the, the trials you go through to get one particular crown and they all have a different theme. Presumably, potentially, linking into the bosses or lore from the first Dark Souls. People are already kind of speculating at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm getting it. That's the bottom line. CR says he's not, so it will either be a solo playthrough or a playthrough with just good Rory, if he's getting it by the time we reach that point. It will also be the new game version because I don't actually have a... Uh, sorry, a new game plus because I don't have a new game character on the PC version and I don't really want to get it for the PS3, which is the only other option available to me. Uh, yeah, so I am getting it. I'm very interested. I I like Dark Souls 2 a lot, so I'm very happy to have more of it. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people are arguing about this because a long time ago, the Dark Souls 2 people said, we're not doing DLC, you're going to get the full experience out of the box, we don't like it. But what people don't point out after that is, between then and now there was another conversation, interview, whatever, with the From Software guys, and they commented on the public outcry that, ah, actually, no, no, we do want DLC, we just don't want... Apologies for this comparison, but by the time you hear this, you'll have already seen my Let's Look Out of Watchdogs. But we don't want a Ubisoft-style DLC. We want proper DLC, the kind that you did for the first the first game, which I assume was good. I didn't pay much attention to it. Uh, yeah, so I think the reason they have done DLC is because people wanted it, and it does certainly seem like it was after the initial production run of the original game, meaning that it was not developed at the same time. And it's a bit dodgy that it's three separate packs. I would have preferred if it was all big, like one big expansion pack, because then the price that they're asking for could be justified. The season pass is twenty pounds. So that probably means that the individual packs are going to be priced around about $8.99, I would assume. So there's a little bit of a saving, but even then, that's quite an, a steep price in my opinion. So, yeah, but I am going to get it because I want to support the game and I want more of it. 
and I will do a playthrough of the new game plus, but well, assuming you can access it that way, I hope you don't have to make a new character because that would be problematic. But there's a trailer available basically everywhere now that if you can check. It showed off some new enemies, some new areas. It looked like there was some kind of... Well, actually, a lot of people picked up on this. It, at the very end of the video, there's like a giant black dog with a big... Almost like a, a, a framped face. And people kind of all thought the same thing I did when I saw it was, Oh, look, they put Devil Joe in Dark Souls 2. It is very similar looking to the Devil Joe, which is quite funny. So uh, Maybe it's a homage to it, who knows? Could be fans of the Monster Hunter series. But either way, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of stoked for it. I'm looking forward to getting it. The first episode, whatever you want to call it, is out at the end of July, then it's the end of August, and then the middle of September, I think. It's kind of month monthly releases. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not particularly sceptical about it. I think I got a satisfying package in Dark Souls 2. I didn't feel cheated. I didn't feel like parts of the game had been cut out. Although, well, actually, no, I do feel parts of the game might have been cut out, but not in the sense of holding it back for DLC just because they were going for a very minimalistic story approach, which some people don't like, some people don't care about, and some people like. I certainly think they did a better job than the, the way they handled the plot or lack of than in the first Dark Souls game, but I can still understand why people are annoyed at the very vague parts of the Dark Souls 2 plot and whether or not this all links in. I think this might go a ways to explain what happens after you see the ending of Dark Souls 2. Maybe. I guess we'll see. Uh, right, so let's move on. I spent a bit too long answering that. Oh, Good Rory asked a question. Who would win in a fight? A giant evil moon zebra or a, tri a time-travelling magic mongoose? This is going to be very confusing to people who weren't listening to the podcast I used to do because the way Good Rory met my friend and I was by starting to email us at a podcast we did called Bringo Hurry. As far as I'm aware, it's still on iTunes, I don't know. Um, yeah, and then he just took to, rather than asking serious questions, just thinking up bizarre matchups and wanting us to debate who would win and why. Well, you've picked a bad example because you know just fine that I'm obviously going to go for the time traveling magic mongoose because I compare myself to a mongoose frequently. And that's going to sound very weird to people who don't hear me talk about this in games. Yeah, so I think a time traveling mongoose would definitely f be able to defeat a giant evil moon zebra. No one else follow in his footsteps. I, I have enough random. I, I can't actually remember how. Well, that's a question for Rory. I'll probably just ask you off camera, but I'll ask you on as well. How did you find the podcast that you started emailing us at? What did you discover them through my videos or like from iTunes or what happened? I'm very curious. Anyway, CR asked potatoes are stuffing, even though I answered it about a month ago. So I'm just going to ignore that. And then we have one final question from Magic Mumbo. When will I be able to return to normality as all I've done this past two weeks is plaster and watch paint dry? I did notice your absence has been noticed and lamented, and I guess it's because you're busy doing DIY. Well, while you watch the paint dry, you could have had stuff playing on your iPad and, you know, browse Twitter and stuff. Certainly better than watching paint dry, but hopefully you'll be done soon, whatever it was you were doing, and then get back to that beast of a PC that you built and everyone laments over how stupidly powerful it is. Right, so that is it for Twitter, so let's go back. Which browser am I in at this point? It's this one. Uh, yes, right, okay, so last week's Q&A and I shall scroll, where's the newest comment at the top? So I want to scroll down to the bottom and work my way up. Ghunt123459, was Ghunt123456 taken? Asked, do you ever plan to do Dark Souls 2 PvP? Not intentionally, no, because I don't like the PvP scene in any Souls game, really. But, you might actually already know this by the time I say it, in New Game Plus, you have a far higher chance of being invaded than in New Game. I guess they wanted to go easier on their players, which I can respect. So, uh, yeah, against our will, there's a lot of invasions coming up. I get invaded by myself once. We got invaded by other people twice. Rory got invaded a couple of times off camera. We can't see what he got up to, but he got killed by the same guy twice. Uh, yeah, but the recording of that is hitting a bit of a road bump because Rory's connection right now is turbulent, to put it politely. His area is getting upgraded to fibre optics, so that's probably the reason why. But it's actually making the co-op playthrough very difficult to maintain at this point. We might be actually recording some more tonight on the day I'm recording this. If not, it'll be a few days later. But eventually he's going to get upgraded and he'll, he'll be in like the same tier of connection as CR, so then I'll be the problem again, which is fine. 
Um, Dinser. Oh, you told me how to pronounce this name, and I can't remember now. Dinser. Dinser. Uh, um, I, I really should have kept a note of this. I'm surprised you've been invaded so much in Watch Dogs. I've only been invaded four times. The scripted one, which is an AI one, and then three players, although I was AFK for one. Oh, there, this is where you pronounced it. So it's pronounced Denster. Denster. Okay, so is that like German pronunciation? Denster. I hope I'm still doing that right. Uh, it didn't happen a lot, a lot, but uh, it happened more often than I would like, and it wasn't it wasn't the frequency it was happening per se. It was the fact that every single time it happened, it was when I was just inches away from hitting a start side mission or start main mission button, and instantly you can't do a damn thing. You have to go deal with the invasion, and I don't like that. I do like that you can turn it off though, so that's why I haven't complained about it too much because you can turn it off. I mean, if Dark Souls 2 PvP bugs you the hell out of you, you can't just turn that off and still co-op, you'd have to like play offline. And it bugs me that they don't put in a, just a, I would like to play offline, please, option within the game. They got asked about it and they said, well no, just, you know, just unplug your connection. No! The the, the gamer is, a bit, is allowed to be lazy, you're the developer, you are not. Put in the offline mode, you bastards. Anyway. Uh, Rory said the true final boss in Dark Souls 2 is BT Internet. Yeah, based on how our last few recording sessions have go, I gone rather. I entirely agree. Steen Steen B says, "Oh my God, Nintendo is stupid." Yes, yes, yeah, yes, they are. Cart Gaming says, "I sincerely hope this Nintendo thing turns out to be good, especially since I want to cover some Nintendo games myself, but I highly doubt it." Yeah, there's still no new information on how they're going to handle this um, this affiliate thing. I think someone else commented on this, so I want to just wrap this all up into one thing. Ah yes, here we go, so Javier Mono. Well, so Nintendo made a multi-channel network, that's ridiculous, I'm not sure which is worse, them taking everything or leaving YouTube YouTubers penny, pennies. They've technically not made a multi-channel network, but they're acting like one. They've gotten into the content- Oh, I just hit my mic, apologies. <laughs> Actually, I hit the mouse mat I set it on to try and do the cut down on the noise vibration, because it's a foam mouse pad mat. Anyway, as I was saying, they're not technically a multi-channel network, they've just gone through the channels that a multi-network channel would, and they've filled the content ID system, which is automatic, with all their shit. And technically anyone can put whatever they like into the content ID system, that's why it's so horribly, horribly flawed. But they've done it on a much bigger scale, and also, they originally did get themselves put into the multi-channel network content ID filter, because prior to all this networked and affiliated channel stuff that you've heard me complaining about before, if you were with a network, you were protected, even if someone like Nintendo filled the regular content system with their content, because yours were protected by your network. YouTube didn't scan them, but then that stuff happened where they changed it and all your videos got scanned, and then Nintendo got their, their way and stole all your money. So yeah, there is no news, no additional details yet, whether well, first of all, what percentage they want, whether or not anyone who is also partnered with a multi-channel network can even take advantage of it, or anything like that. It was really depressing on our Let's Play, I saw someone posting saying, oh look, I got I got to the top of the search rankings, I'm amazing. Like, they were being happy for themselves, not boasting, and it was a Mario Kart 8 video, and he was showing a picture of his, his video manager, and it was like, yeah, you've gotten like 10 times more views on that video than you have on any of your other ones. But you know what else is different about that one video that's done really well? It's not monetized, because Nintendo's stealing all your money. So aren't you pleased that you've given them money? And unfortunately, if he's a Nintendo fanboy, he probably is, because they are ridiculous. Yeah, so anyway, yes, moving on. Until there's more concrete facts, I can't really talk about it anymore. Weird Musician pointed out that the third Transformers film was Dark of the Moon. Yes, it was. I was getting them confused with the new one, which is something dark spark, something something dark side. Uh, Alex Rowley pointing out that he loves the transcripts on YouTube. I do as well. I love putting them on when it's me talking because, or anyone with an accent really, because they, well, you don't even need an accent. They, they just don't understand words. But if you put on the transcripts on YouTube for someone who has an accent, it can make some pretty funny sentences. I would turn it on right now, but I, I can't because I'd have to load the video and I don't want to risk having my voice in the background. And then Daniel Nah was asking what was the soul sucking job because he was too lazy to go find the 1500th video. I answered him on that, so I'm not going to go into details on camera. Uh, DRC090997 said, Tori Bash is amazing, you'll love it. I did love it and I did a video on it. And will you have heard this or seen it by the time I upload this? Let me just press on my video manager. I think it's due to copy either on Friday night or Saturday, so I think you will have. Spoilers, I just gave away and I'm filming this. Uh, oh, it's actually going up tonight. Yes, okay, fine. Yes, you'll have already seen that I am enjoying Tori Bash. 
I think it'd be a lot of fun with friends, and we might try it during one of the Steam nights, I'm not sure. Although mainly I'll be wanting to do the, uh, the, the TF2 server. Although you'll be hearing this after the, the pre-birthday celebration Steam night I'm holding on Saturday the 7th, which we are doing the first month on our night for a while. So I hope that went well, since you'll be hearing this after it happened, and that we got a lot of stuff recorded, and a lot of people turned up. It used to be the most popular thing I did during the Steam night, so we'll see. And I think that's about wraps up everything I wanted to talk about. The only other thing I did want to mention briefly was that I did pick up Mario Kart 8 and I got it on eBay from a second-hand seller, so Nintendo got absolutely zero money from me, which is all they deserve, quite frankly. I've played through all the tracks on the lowest difficulty ones, or the 50cc, whatever, and earlier today I started on the 100cc and did the first half, like all the new stages, and then like there's four sets of four new tracks, and then there's four sets of four remix tracks from previous games. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I like how vibrant and it looks and it's very colourful and for a Wii U game it looks pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Uh, it's fun to play, yeah. It's the same as Mario Kart 7 to me. I don't think I played Mario Kart 6 because that was the one on the Wii, right? I definitely missed a few from like, say, I think I played the DS one but I didn't own it. Mm, either way, it's very, very similar to Mario Kart 7. Not a lot. It's the standard Nintendo MO where they basically change nothing, they just tweak a few things and make things look prettier and then they call that a sequel and then release it at full price and their stupid fanboys buy it. Which they did because it's increased Wii U sales by 600 and something percent in the UK. Which isn't really that difficult to predict when there's nothing else worth playing on the console and you give away a code in the game to get another game worth around 40 quid. So. I mean, who'd, who'd have thought that I'd make you sell a game really well? A console with nothing else on it, and you're giving away a game of equal value with it. Wow, that's going to sell super, super good. Although, actually, that said, I didn't get a code in mine. And it wasn't opened by the person I sold it, well, I bought it from, rather, because it was still shrink-wrapped in the official Nintendo shrink wrap. So, I guess not every u retailer was, was giving away the free game code. Or maybe I have to put in that VIP thing, actually. I haven't tested yeah, but either way, is Mario Kart 8 good? Yeah? Should you buy a Wii U to play it? No. If you have a 3DS, get Mario Kart 7. It's just as good. Not as pretty, but just as good. The CPU still cheats the higher difficulty is on. It still gets item bias. They've stupidly added coins to the item rotation, so if you're in first place, you'll basically always get coins. There is an item to counter blue shells, but I've found it being incredibly rare. I mean, I got through all the lowest difficulty, never not being in first. So I've got a fairly big pool here of races to say with certainty that the new item, which is like a super honking horn that does an AoE burst around you, it's super rare. Although I was speaking to a friend who's also playing the game just before recording this and he apparently gets it fairly frequently uh, on the same difficulties, so I don't know. Maybe I'm just super bad, uh, super bad, super unlucky, but that new horn thing that is a counter to blue shells is too rare. And the computer still does sometimes team up to fuck you up, just so you can't get in first place on the higher difficulty. He's like, oh, you're, you're going to be first place, are you? Well, here's a blue shell. Oh, you used that item to counter the blue shell. Well, here's a red shell. Here's another red shell. Oh, you were about to move. Well, well, here's another red shell. That still happens. They don't do good AI. The Mario Kart games have never had good AI. They've always had to give them unfair advantages to stay competitive. That technically doesn't matter much here because it has full online and apparently that works well. I've not tried it yet, don't really have any intention of doing it to be honest. I shall probably just play it a bit more and then end up selling it. It's not a game I can see holding on to, maybe, I don't know. Again, for lack of anything else, right? I mean, I put like 150 hours into Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. What else have I played on my Wii U? I'm glancing over at my shelf. Uh, I did like 20 minutes of Nintendo Land. I have no idea why it was a thing and stopped. Oh, I played the new Super Mario World game, whatever it's called, the one where he's a cat. Good level design, stupid mechanics, didn't like the new powers at all, the one before was better which is one of the games you can claim when you buy the new Mario Kart for the record. Oh and Zombie U, I kind of drifted away from playing that because it was so clunky from being a launch game on the Wii U but it has really, it's the only game I've played on the Wii U that's made really really good use of the gamepad. I really liked the way Wii U, uh, Zombie U rather, used that and I like the mechanics itself of a, almost a roguelike aspects of you know you can die and then find your previous 
person you played as zombified, although there wasn't really any difference between the people you were playing as, so it could definitely be expanded upon. But yeah, I liked that game. And that's it. Well, that's all I've played on Wii U, because there's nothing else. I will never forget the first day I got my Wii U when I was preparing to do the, the Monster Hunter uh, collaborations. I just sat on, I didn't want to get started playing the game yet, so I just sat on the Wii U thing, the, the home screen. And I decided, oh, well, there's a, a YouTube app built into it, I'll just watch some YouTube videos. Crashed the console three times in, in one day, and I've never used it since because it seems to crash the console every time I use it. So good job, Nintendo, you make a fantastic bit of hardware there. It's no wonder nobody buys it. So, with that said, I guess I'll go now. And again, thank you very much for any birthday wishes in the comments. And if you have any just topics of conversation or questions about anything else that you want me to answer the next time I record one of these, leave them in the comments as well. And also look out for my message on Twitter when I say, oh, later today I'll be recording a chat video. Feel free to throw out topics. Uh, yeah, so do that as well if you want. And we'll talk about whatever else. We need to oh, in fact, we just know, I, I already know what I'm talking about next time I record one of these because it'll be E3. We'll be talking about E3, basically just nothing but E3 next time. It might actually end up being a feature length. Is that the right term? It'll probably be a feature length let's chat next time because I'm going to end up talking at length about each of the main E3 conferences. And no, I don't follow Nintendo's Nintendo Direct bullshit. Just the, the main conferences at the actual E3 floor. So yeah, expect a feature length chat next time as long as I don't forget and collect all my information about the conferences as I watch them live. Also if you do follow me on Twitter you will see me live tweeting about the the conferences as they happen because I have a habit of doing that. I try not to spam though. Have Twitter added that feature they were talking about yet where you can temporarily mute someone because there's folk like Major Nelson that I really don't want to hear <laughs> during E3. The but I don't mind hearing now and then. So that mute, mute, ugh, that mute feature would be very handy, especially if you don't want to hear me prattle on about E3 during the conferences also. But with that, I, this dragged on an awful lot. Thank you very much for listening. I shall see you slash hear you slash whatever next Monday. Be sure to check out the TF2 server. I'll be playing it at any opportunity I get this week. Try and drum up some interest to keep it populated until the time where we host a private event for my subscribers and Patreon supporters. My name has been Flick, this has been Let's Chat for Monday the whatever it is, look at the date yourself. Thank you for listening and ta-ta for now.